You've heard the word infrastructure a lot in the past few months. It's been one of President Joe Biden's key agenda items. And while you may not think much about it, it's something that impacts your life on a daily basis. Infrastructure includes everything from roads and bridges to drinking water and sewer systems. And when it comes to upkeep and performance, it appears Kentucky has plenty of room for improvement. The American Society of Civil Engineers gave Kentucky a C- minus on its most recent infrastructure report card. In fact, Kentucky didn't get above a B- minus in any of the 10 categories used to evaluate our infrastructure. The biggest problem, age. So which structures are in the most dire need and what does Kentucky hope to get out of an infrastructure bill from Washington? LEX 18's Christiana Ford takes an in-depth look at what needs to be fixed. As infrastructure talks pick up on the national level. Let me be clear. Neither side got everything they wanted in this deal. <clears throat> That's what it means to compromise. Kentuckians are chomping at the bit. I'm paying a lot of attention and so are my colleagues of, you know, okay, we think we're getting money. How is it coming? When is it coming? And how will we be able to use it? I think it's validation that what we've all been saying for so long has moved up and it is being recognized and it is going to be addressed. Leaders like Jennifer Kirchner, who runs Kentuckians for Better Transportation, Chad LaRue, who runs Kentucky Association of Highway Contractors, and J.D. Cheney, CEO of the Kentucky League of Cities, are particularly anxious for a deal. Funding transportation isn't necessarily an option. So we have to come up with solutions. They've been trying to push the needle on the state level for years. We hear that, you know, maybe maybe it's not the right time every single session. And so five times in a row, even when, when gas was $1.50 a gallon, we were saying it's still not the right time. I don't know when, when uh, state policymakers are going to wake up and see that now is the right time. Yesterday was the right time uh, to, make, to make this investment. Because they know exactly what kind of state Kentucky is in. A dire need of not only a facelift, but a total reconstruction. I liken it, liken it to no different than owning a house or a car, right? You, you build a house and you can do virtually no maintenance on it five or 10 years. You go 15 or 20 years without maintenance, you're going to pay heavily for it the longer you wait. To put it into perspective, there are 14,422 bridges in Kentucky. Some are state and others are federal, but 1,033 are in poor condition. That's 7% of Kentucky's bridges. Franklin is one of those counties with 15.97% of bridges in poor condition. And this bridge behind me in Frankfurt is one of them. It's due in part just to a chronic underfunding that we've seen only increase over the last decade. Right now, the estimated cost in Kentucky to upgrade all poor pavement is $1 billion, and it's another billion for the poor bridges. The White House says the agreement calls for about $579 billion in new spending over the next five years. These Kentuckians are hoping it becomes more than just talk. In Franklin County, Christiana Ford, LEX 18 News. And when we looked at the data, most of the bridges in poor condition were in eastern Kentucky. In addition to roads, Kentucky received its lowest grades for dams, hazardous waste, levees, and roads. A D grade means something is poor or at risk. The report showed that a majority of Kentucky dams are more than and more than half of its levees are now more than 50 years old. A breach in any one of these systems could result in loss of life and significant property damage. Hey, notice when you stepped out today, it's gotten more humid. We told you it was coming, the muggies were on the way back and they're here. They'll be with us through the weekend, but that will not deter folks from getting out and enjoying what's gonna be a wonderful evening. You're looking down at the distillery district there off Manchester Street. You've got all the wonderful attractions down there. You've got the burl across the street. It's going to be a wonderful night to be outside with all the patios. I mean, it is going to be a full house on the patios tonight anywhere you go. On the dew point numbers, that's how we tell if it's muggy or not. That's how you feel when you walk out the door when these numbers are pushing 70, which they are. That's when you really start to feel it. So that, that crispness, that kind of pristine feel we had earlier in the week with the Canadian air, Forget about it. It's gone. And now we're looking at the muggies of summer uh, in the upper 60s there. You see around Lexington and Richmond, 70 there in Frankfurt. And we combine that with air temperatures that are in the low 80s. Your heat index numbers are a little bit above what the air temperature is. Not uncomfortable yet, but we'll think about it later in the weekend. 82 right now 
in Lexington. So our future track, let's take you on through the rest of this evening and temperatures staying warm. We'll see some clouds around as we work our way through the night tonight. A little bit of a breeze as well. We'll bottom out in the upper 60s. We'll go through your day tomorrow. Nice southerly wind. In fact, it's to be a breezy day for you. How about those highs headed to the mid 80s tomorrow afternoon? We'll talk about the rest of your weekend. You want to come back for that. We'll, we'll have it for you in a couple minutes. All right. Thank you, Bill. This entire week, we've been shining a spotlight on Somerset and all the hidden gems that have made the town what it is today. And if you want the full experience when you visit, there are two places you just have to check in on. That's right. You need to try a donut from Amon's Sugar Shack. Uh -huh. That sounds good. And a cup of coffee from Baxter's Coffee. LEX 18 Sophia Millar shows us the two family owned businesses which have been around for decades and how owners say they've been able to withstand the test of time. Welcome to Somerset, where the coffee's hot and the sweets are homemade. Baxter's Coffee Shop and Amon Sugar Shack are two spots in the city that have been around for decades and they're highly beloved by a community that has grown up watching the businesses expand and flourish over the years. Amos was started back in 1951. Dad bought the uh, bakery for mom for a birthday present. She said it was the gift that always kept giving, so. Amon's owner, Doug Stevens, says people will come from all corners of the world to try his family's 70-year-old recipes. I don't know, we probably made close to a billion donuts over the years. But the true marker of success for Stevens isn't measured in donuts sold or sandwiches eaten. He says the real secret is treating the bakery the way his family always did, like an extension of home. My biggest pleasure when people that grew up in Somerset and they move away and then they come back for family reunions and, and uh, school reunions and they stop in, and they, they get something to eat over here, and they say, man, that's just the way I remember it. That feeling of community 